All right. Um, pretty soon we're going to have to dig a little bit more into the middle school teacher's expertise because we're going to have to rearrange the tables for group work. But we'll hold off for a second on that one. I want to talk just a little bit first about uh, what problem solving actually is because I think these words can mean a lot of different things to a lot of different people. And uh, my definition of it pretty much comes from Paul Zeitz, who wrote a great book called The Art and Craft of Problem Solving, a very hard book, but really good. And what he says is that the difference is an exercise is something that you're supposed to already know how to do. And a problem is something where when you start, you don't know what's going to happen. Some of the things we do here might be problems for some of you and exercises for some of the rest, depending on your background. You know, for me, nine times seven is an exercise. For my six-year-old daughter, that's a hard problem, nine times seven. You know, that takes some thinking to figure out how you're going to get there. Like, what are you going to do? Because she hasn't really learned multiplication in school yet. Okay, so one great example of this I learned from James Tanton, a uh, pretty amazing uh, mathematician and teacher. And you need to have two hands for this, so it looks like we'll be able to be successful here. Uh, this is good. So everybody seems to have two hands. That's great. So you start with your hands like this. This is called the problem-solving salute. And it's a good way to open any problem-solving meeting to give people an idea of what's going on. OK. And then you cross them over right arm on top. So for those of you who have right-left issues, it looks like this. OK. Uh, then you put palm to palm. And you wiggle your little fingers. And you wiggle your thumbs. Somewhere around here, you start wondering, why are we doing this silly thing? So far, it's been an exercise, right? You're like, gee, this is pointless. This is how a lot of kids probably feel about, about math, right? You wiggle your little fingers. And then when you're done, you just bring them back. And I can see very few of you solve this problem. OK, so you see what happens there. Suddenly, it's a problem. You have this moment of surprise. You have this moment of puzzlement of, wait, how does that work? You have this curiosity. You want to know. You actually care about the answer. I'm like, yeah, yeah, whatever, wiggle, wiggle. What is this silly stuff? Right? There's this huge amount of motivation that comes from a problem. I think that it's really just part of human nature to want to solve puzzles. And so to the extent that you can make math feel that way, like there's a mystery to be resolved, you're going to get a lot more engagement. And I think the key thing is it has to feel like the kind of puzzle that you don't immediately know, because then it's an exercise and it's boring. But it also has to feel like the kind of puzzle that you have some chance of figuring out, or else you just give up. And uh, so one term that uh, one of our teacher circle groups coined for this is the real goal is to find problems that give you a real sense of frustration. Right. So you want it to be right on that edge where it's so hard that it's almost going to be frustrating, but motivating and exciting and puzzling enough that it's still fun. So I hope that this problem solving salute is one of those. Um, should we try it again? OK. So, so you start with your arms out, right arm on top, palm to palm, wiggle the little fingers, wiggle the thumbs, wiggle the little fingers, and then when you're ready, come back. OK, so I can see a lot of people are still having difficulty with this problem, which is fine. It wouldn't be a good problem if you just all figured it out right away. So one of the things that's great about problem solving is that there's a lot of strategies you can use. And these strategies apply in many different domains. A lot of them are not even just even mathematical strategies. right? So one of the great strategies, and the reason why I love the problem solving salute so much is because of the strategy of working backwards being a great tool to get you started on solving this thing. So how would you like to look at the end of the problem solving salute if everything went well? You would like to look like this, right? You may have had some difficulty looking like this, but this is what you wish, right? <laughs> so working backwards, you start at the end, and then you go back a step. And this is where it's an advantage to be a little older, because the kids just do this, and they're like, I don't get it. But all of us feel like, oh, my left wrist hurts. That's a hint, <laughs> right? Because your left wrist hurting is telling you what you have to do. It might feel a little bit unnatural normally to get your hands into a position where the last step is going to work. Right? So you can look at that last step. You go to the step before that. The pain in the left wrist gives you a little bit of a clue. 
Maybe you can keep going backwards through the steps a little bit. Oh. All right. Now should we try it again? All right. So you put the arms out. Right arm on top. Put them together, which you now know is the key step. Make sure your left wrist suffers somewhat. Right. Your right wrist goes the way it wants to. Your left wrist goes the way it doesn't want to. When you wiggle, the wiggling, of course, is just silly. But then in the end, you're in position to win. Right? So that's the problem-solving salute. And that's our first big strategy, working backwards.